Well, there's two things that bother me about uh, beekeeping right now. The first thing that bothers me is not only the smoke in my face, but this hive bothers me. There's something wrong with it, and today I want you to go along with me. We're going to find out what's wrong with it. The second thing that bothers me has to do with the beekeeping community. And maybe I shouldn't really address this. It's kind of been avoided. I haven't heard anybody talk about this. Maybe it's time to get the uh, talk about the elephant in the room. And uh, I'm going to finally come out and talk about something that is concerning me about the beekeeping community. But let's first get started in this hive. One of the things that concerns me about this hive, the, the main thing that I feel like it's not doing well, is because there's just not as many bees as um, there should be. And so a couple of days ago, I popped it open. I looked at it. I, I put... Uh, I found the queen and I put her down below the end of the, it's got a deep and a super on it. And I put the queen down there. So I know there's no queen in this top super, but I want to show you some things and it's going to help you guys realize what to do when you come out of winter and you see a little problem. And the faster you take care of this problem, the faster you can save the hive. Let me show you. What we're going to learn about this hive, it's going to be told to us in the bottom deep. It's the last box. We're going to see what's down there. A lot of you might say uh, that you, you're not comfortable getting into the bottom deep or you're not comfortable working a hive like this. Well, uh, you got to cowboy up and get her done. You need to learn the skill of just doing a, uh, bee inspections like this. It's so important because you just got to be able to give a good assessment. Now, some of the frames didn't line up correctly, and so that's why you can see here that they put drone brood uh, down below there between the boxes. So let me show you why, why we're looking at some larvae exposed there. It's because some of the frames didn't line up correctly, and uh, it created a gap, and the bees raised some drones right there. So those are all drone, mm, almost uh, some of them are in the purple, purple-eyed stage. And I'm looking for if I see mites crawling on them. Actually, I don't see any mites on those drones. Now, if you want to, if you're a very hygienic beekeeper, you can, you know, get the bees off of here and then you can scrape all of this off. Now, we want to look at to see if we see any brood down here in the bottom deep and what condition this brood is in. Is it spotty or will it be, you know, solid brood? So we're not impressed with the queen's laying pattern. Sometimes when the queen has a poor laying pattern like this, it can be the result of many things. So we're going to go over and see if we can find any brood as we scoot across. Okay, I'm going to look for eggs or larvae or anything. No, so no eggs at all. So, so now as we look at each of these frames, we're getting more concerned. Okay, this is what I'm saying. More concerned because we just don't see anything down here in the bottom yet. Okay, just a frame of honey, nectar, and no brood. All right, that's okay. We're getting closer to the middle. So as we get to the middle, the queen has a moment, a chance here to redeem herself. Right now it's looking like, for me, this is a problem with the queen. The queen is failing to lay a significant number of eggs. So this hive is going to quickly uh, run out of uh, resources of workers really fast. Here's a good example of why I'm concerned. You see the brood at the top here and we can see that there is some larvae but over here on the other open cells no eggs. No eggs. So she's not laying where she could be laying. She's only laying a little bit. And notice here, she seemed fine laying some drone brood, but did not lay any worker brood beside it. Another concern. She still has a couple more frames to redeem herself. All we're looking for is a frame of solid brood. With eggs, lots of eggs. We need eggs. Eggs tells us that the queen is laying well. Um, so that's what we're looking for, a lot, lot of eggs. All right, let's take a look at this frame here. 
A lot of propolis in this hive. Okay, we're, I see some brood, so let's evaluate what we see. Well, we're seeing the same thing again. Spotty brood, kind of like at the top. Not horrible, but not good. And no eggs. No eggs. Okay, let's look at the other side. Same thing on this frame. We have a little bit of brood at the top, but we're not seeing eggs in all these open cells. We're just not seeing the eggs. So we're trying to figure out at this point, should we blame the queen or is it a hive condition? And you can see some of the larvae down in there um, glistening, but I'm not sure if um, this is a tough call. Let's look at one more frame in the middle here that'll help us kind of decide what we want to do. The reason that we're trying to look at this and make a decision now, because if we do something now, there's a chance that we can take advantage of the bee population and uh, a failing queen and keep this hive strong. Now, if we wait around and keep trying to make up our mind and we do have a failing queen, this hive is gonna get weaker and weaker. And then when we finally do replace the queen and she starts laying, then, you know, we're gonna be behind a little bit. Sometimes we can be behind a lot. Let's see what we got here. Okay, the brood pattern is improving on this one. But again, I don't see eggs scattered all over the place like I do most of my other hives. I mean, I do see some larvae off on the side over here, but again, I can see open spots where there's just not much going on. I know you're not gonna be able to see down in the cells like probably I can, but what I see is I don't see a really crazy laying pattern. I can see eggs and larvae but they're of different ages real close together. So why isn't the queen just pumping out eggs? Spotty brood, what does that mean? Is it a queen failure? Yeah, it is. And so the only thing that a, a, a beekeeper can do right now is to put a queen in there. I really can't get queens uh, mated yet. I raised my own queens. I'm still about maybe two, three, a month away. That hive's gonna be okay. They have brood, but it's just not good. So I'll raise my own queens and I'll put a new queen in there. So a beekeeper that's brand new that doesn't understand the uh, fundamentals of beekeeping, they might look at that and not understand, is that spotty brood? Now I looked at another hive today. I think my camera uh, actually ran out of memory card when I was filming it, but I looked at another hive, similar uh, brood pattern, but it wasn't a problem because every hole, every cell that wasn't filled that looked spotty, it had an egg or a larvae in it. So she's starting to lay everywhere she can. So that's a good sign. But in the first hive we looked at, no eggs, no larva, back in the spotty open brood. So that's a concern. See, those kind of techniques um, is what you can learn if you really study bees and behavioral of bees. And then, then you start keeping bees, you're not gonna lose your hive. Well, I wanted to share with you guys about what I'm concerned about in the beekeeping community. Uh, really, it boils down to this. When I first started beekeeping, uh, beekeeping was different in how you started out. You had to really get with a mentor. You had to really do some of research. You had to really focus on what you were getting into. It wasn't, it wasn't a hobby that you could just one day wake up and say, hey, I think I'll be a beekeeper today. I think I'll run down here, grab a hive, grab some bees, and away I go. Like, back when I started, and especially up till about three years ago, about three years ago, you could not just jump into beekeeping by waking up on April, what is today, the 15th? You could not wake up April the 15th and say, I wanna be a beekeeper and go buy a hive, go buy a package or a nuke and start beekeeping because it, those things weren't available. Now, I know there's probably cases where they were available, you know, maybe a buddy down the road or a company didn't sell all their nukes. They're, they're those rare scenarios. But today, wow, right now, it's April the 15th. And if you wanted to, you could go on, you know, Amazon. You could go to any B store right now, mom and pop or the big ones, and get a beehive. 
And you can find people still selling packages in April. Now, I'm serious. Back maybe three to five years ago, uh, it was pretty common for most places to sell out of packages early on, like early April or February, and you just couldn't get any more packages of bees. Now, why am I saying all this? Why is that a concern? Here's the deal. This is something I thought maybe I won't say, maybe it's not worth saying, but it really does concern me, okay? And it should concern really all of us in beekeeping because what's happening is that I'm seeing a lot more people entering in beekeeping without knowing anything at all about what they're doing. Now, I understand that's anybody's right to do that. And I'm not saying you're bad if you do that. I kind of got started that way. <laughs> you know, I just jumped into it. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but I'm saying that there is a better way now that we have so many classes, now that we have so many people doing it, so many mentors, so many different conferences, so many different beekeepers. So here's the deal. A lot of people today are getting into beekeeping. I know this because I've talked to a lot of beekeepers. I've talked to a lot of my friends that are entomologists. And I talk to people that work for bee companies that answer the phones, right? And what they're saying about this year in particular, this is coming from beekeeping uh, club presidents, they're telling me that people are starting beekeeping and the questions they're asking are so basic that they have no knowledge at all about bees. So beekeeping has kind of become a hobby that's fashionable. It's easy to wake up one morning and say, gosh, I think I'm going to get a bee, be a beekeeper. I'm going to get a hive, going to get some bees on the way I go, but I know what I'm doing. Where when I was a beekeeper and up till about three years ago, most people didn't start that way. Most people knew they had to study. They had to put a lot of time into it. And so what's what's happening is those of us that answer beekeeping questions, like on my YouTube channel here, and, and feel free to go through my comments if you want to, but you'll see a plethora of comments that people leave and they're asking questions that are so basic to beekeeping. I did not want to put any on screen. I didn't want to embarrass anybody because I get it, all right? I'm not putting anybody down. I'm not saying you're bad for doing that, but I'm just saying that Beekeeping is much more fun, much more enjoyable, and much more successful if you put more time into understanding bee biology, honeybees, their behavior, and the various beekeeping skills uh, that can be explained in a class or in some books that you might want to check out or in my own, my, my own videos, I explain how to do things. But you really do have, a ha have to have this fundamental like a foundation of beekeeping for you to really understand what you're doing and what you're seeing, just like we experienced in that hive we looked at today. Now, let me tell you this. Most beekeepers start beekeeping and they don't make it 12 months. That's the statistics that's rumored to be about 12 months and a beekeeper's done. They have uh, about 80% of beekeepers don't make it into year two. And it's because of these reasons that you start quickly without having a good working knowledge or a fundamental in beekeeping and all your bees die either that winter or that year even, even in the growing season, the mites might get them or something like that. And uh, you spend hundreds of dollars, you spend, um, you know, all the effort into getting going and it's pretty sad. I believe and feel strongly about this, that our bees deserve better than this. Again, I'm not putting anyone down. I'm not saying that you're bad or, or wrong. I'm just saying there's a better way for us to tend to our bees when we first start out. And I think sometimes that there's bees are so readily available, there's so many hives available that, that people can uh, just not get into the study part of it. They don't focus on learning, mentoring underneath others, and away they get into, away they go getting into beekeeping and start making some mistakes or not be able to identify what's going on in that hive and they lose the hive and they're frustrated and they're out of it. And so I want to encourage everybody that's watching this, that, you know, nobody is to blame. I'm not blaming, blaming how many just proliferate of beekeeping companies we have now. I'm not blaming that. That's not their problem. That's good. It's a good thing to have. It's not that we have so many people selling packages. I mean, you can almost go five miles from here and there'll be four or five pe people bringing in packages from the south. You can go, it's crazy. 
that people are selling packages of bees everywhere and nukes too. And I'm not saying that's bad or wrong and not blaming anybody, but I'm just saying it's the, it's the people that are getting into beekeeping that somehow, I don't know how to do it, but somehow we just really need to, I'm doing what I can. I'm making a video saying, please take a class, learn about bees and you'll, you're going to enjoy it so much more. If the more you know about bees, you're going to enjoy it so much more. Now, if you want to take a class with me, I have online beekeeping courses. They will help you a ton. I also have mentorship uh, program where I can coach you and mentor you in beekeeping. This is especially helpful for those of you getting into it for your first year and you don't know what you're doing. I'd love to be your mentor. I'll leave links in the description below and check out this video right here, how to start beekeeping. It may be just enough to get you off the runway, get you flying.